Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Show Studio's live panel discussions. Um, in these discussions, experts from all parts of the industry <laughs> discuss and debate the most important shows of Fashion Week of the season. Um, today, during Paris Fashion Week, we are going to be discussing Vivian Westwood. Um, we're just going to do some introductions first, so I'm just going to introduce myself. Um, my name is Lyle Hakariah, and I have been involved in fashion in London for probably 25 to 30 years now. Um, I run my own venue, queer venue in the East End, and uh, yeah, I've uh, made close with the high and the mighty, the bizarre and the beautiful. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Fornera. I'm a fashion media student at the London College of Fashion, and beside my studies I model and I organize events. Hi, I'm Maximilian Rayner. I study fashion design with marketing at Central St. Martins. I'm also personal assistant to Mr. Stephen Phillip, who owns like a vintage archive. He's a collector, he does a design consultancy. Hi, I'm Aaron Nesh. I'm a final year menswear design student at London College of Fashion. Hi, I'm Clody, and I'm currently a design intern at Show Studio. Great. Um, so to start this off, I think with Hetty's help, we are going to have a look at um, a, an overall look of the collection. Um, unfortunately, we don't have sound, so obviously an important part of this is the um, music as well. I know that some of us have looked online um, with it. Some of us haven't. I know I haven't. Have you, have you looked? Yeah. OK, so I'm the only one who hasn't. Um, so if anybody kind of want to pick up the threads of you know, what the music was like, um, what the overall sort of aesthetic of the show, which looks incredibly opulent to me here, um, that'd be kind of a good place to start. And then from there, we'll go in and we'll have look at specific things that you're all interested in or what you want to talk about as well. Sure. So, um, Max, do you want to sort of start off? Yeah, I mean, well, it's Suzanne that's done a kind of sound, what I would call sound art, performance art with sound, uh, that's the soundtrack. I mean, I only heard it on my iPhone on the, in the cab on the way over here, but it's political in nature. I wish we knew exactly what uh, what she is saying, mm -hmm. but you know a slightly more about Suzanne, who's... I've worked with Suzanne for This is her years. here on the I've screen now. I've worked with now. Suzanne for many years, uh, Suzanne and No Bra, and obviously the focus thing about No Bra is long hair, no, no top, and, you know, that's kind of the performance. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sort of lived in London for many years. I'm fairly sure, somewhere in the back of mind, that there has been a collaboration or some modelling with Westwood, mm -hmm. um, and then moved to New York, um, and then with the change of government and migration policy has moved back to um, London, but who knows what's going to happen now, maybe she'll move back to Berlin yeah, as well, yeah. with everything that's going on here as well. But the, it's always soundscapes, it's yeah. always quite dark, it's always quite industrial. Um, and quite as, sexual. Yeah, and as a trans woman, has yeah. a lot to kind of sort of say about their experience in the world. And uh, yeah, it it's, can be anything from euphoric to a dirge mm. as well. Mm. I remembered one. one of the, sorry, one of the things that she has said is like, the devil is always a man. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I can remember right. being said. <laughs> so she also kept saying on repeat, it's 2020, it's time for change, it's time mm. for change. And I think that was an important message throughout the whole collection, really. She yeah. said it so many times, so that was... And so was she performing on a, a sort yeah, of podium there as well? Yeah. Performing, as the models were kind of coming in, so to one side as well? Yeah, she was in the background, but also mainly in the foreground, because you can hear her throughout the whole thing, so it was right. really important, I thought. Good. But I feel even that positioning is slightly odd, in that we're watching this right now, and unless you saw her at the very start, what seems like a very interesting part of the show isn't really... I'd like to have seen her position maybe a bit better. We've got a very traditional runway here, and it could be cool, because right now we don't actually know that this performance is taking place. Yeah. And then how do you feel about live performances and fashion shows? Because obviously there's a huge history of people playing pianos, whole bands being involved. I mean, I know quite a few bands and people that have played live at different fashion shows as well. Do you think that adds to it, or is it just yeah. something you cut off from? I mean, is that aesthetic of the band and the music really important? I think music and fashion are two things that should be together. Music is art, fashion is art. You know, I think, why not? If you can have live music instead of audio that's already been previously recorded, then I think it brings more the life to the show. The soundtrack is as important as the hair, the makeup, mm -hmm. so it's like it, it's an important part And then by, by being live rather than a recorded soundtrack, what's the sort of difference there? Is it that sort of having somebody there adds another layer to it rather yeah, than yeah. it just being somebody, you know, 
Somebody who spent a lot of time making a soundtrack, but just pressing a it's button. It's more theatrical, I will say, and for Westwood, it's really important. Although I thought that this collection, you know, like was somehow less theatrical than than before. But uh, I like the fact that it was the the voice over. So hopefully Suzanne helped to give another tactile, another level. Yeah, and uh, and the words were like somehow uh, they match with the the message of. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting, because we're watching this in silent, <laughs> it's interesting to watch it yeah. with the music and now in silent. Yeah. So I think when you just look at the clothes visually, the message that she's saying, I, I mean, it's I don't lost. get that. It's lost it. because of the clothes. And I would love the clothes to say that same message. You know, it's 2020, it's time for change, etc., mm. etc. Well, I don't like, see that in the clothes at all. Yeah, but really. Well, I mean, this is looking like a defiant warrior woman look here with that march and that sort of helmet and that sort of like huge expanse of the film. I don't think that's enough now <laughs> in terms of in fashion. There needs to be a lot more cohesion between what you're saying and what you're doing. Right. And I think it, it's, an, I, Westwood as a brand's been accused of greenwashing a lot over the last, well, because she, she pioneered it so early, now that everyone else has got back on the bandwagon, it's sort of like everyone's ready, guns sort of mm -hmm. in hand to call out hypocrisy. Yeah. And I think another example of that is like, oh, if you want to be controversial and the sound is saying it's time for change, and actually what we're seeing is essentially a very similar look and aesthetic to what we've always seen, which isn't a bad thing because that's what keeps customers coming back to the brand. But do you think a designer every season can keep on pushing that envelope in a way that is also commercial as well? I think it doesn't have to be controversial or massively new every time, but it has to feel really fresh. And like, if you think about even like yesterday with Loewe, it's like, it's very simple. It's not, it doesn't feel like boundary pushing, but it does feel fresh every mm -hmm. season to me. And that's talking about a very commercial kind of LVMH brand. Yeah. Whereas this is Westwood, which is supposed yeah, to be like I, a... I massively agree. I think that um, it just feels like reworked vintage. Like they've got the vintage in the studio and they've decided to rework it. And I think that for her, for who she is and what she represents and the era that she founded, like I w and like what she did with um, the Assange protest and she like curated this uh, exhibition at the... Uh, serpentine with the ready to wear collection. Like, I would love that message to be sort of sledgehammered in these, in these looks. And you know, if there's the music that's saying a very political message, I, I don't particularly get that just from sort of silent pictures scrolling down, you know. Yeah. And that's why I love Westwood. You know, growing up and falling in love with fashion is that point of view of what Westwood was as a young but person. Is that also not the nature of being at a show and seeing the show as well? I mean, obviously we're of sort of seeing it second hand, so we also lose that sort of, you know, that euphoria, that je ne sais quoi that you get in a room for being with the models, with the clothes, and with somebody singing as well. So, mm. you know, already we're kind of removed yeah. from that yeah, message yeah. of what the collection is. I felt like about. her collection are quite, you know, seeing this collection, this could have been released uh, 10 years ago, I feel like her collection are quite timeless, you know. Uh, she is always uh, faithful to her identity, to her DNA, which, you know, we can see like corset, drapery, tailoring, um, the fabrics. I mean, she's using the, the same fabrics. And I think this is a bad and good thing because at the same time, you need to keep on creating new things. Uh, but uh, remain faithful to your yeah. identity and... Well, I mean, we all spoke about this as well, about, you know, obviously there's a huge resurgence of 90s, which has been Westwood was at, as a label was at yeah. its peak, and sort of, you know, sort of calling back on that, maybe reconfiguring old kind of classics and doing all of that sort of stuff with the collection. And then how does that sort of manifest itself now? Mm. And then who is it speaking to? Who's, I mean, for me, as I, I know that those collections were also you know, always made for the East, for like Japan, now there's China, now there's Korea, and so there's huge spending there as well. Maybe it's not so much for the European market, this one, as well. Maybe this is like, this is, you know, some of the best of, this is mm. some of the really beautiful things that Westwood is renowned for as well. Think so. about what you were saying about the idea that we're consuming it from a scroll, like a scrolling screen, yeah. and that, you know, we don't know that je ne sais quoi that the show might have. But that is the challenge that every designer now faces in, in the era of Instagram, is that the way that we all do consume fashion, unfortunately, is 
the scrolling screen. Mm -hmm. And I think for the very few that get to experience these shows, maybe the, the sense of spectacle makes it more enjoyable and feel fresh. But if you can't achieve freshness from a scrolling screen now, actually your design message becomes a bit redundant, which I personally think is a shame, but I think that's why Instagrammable fashion has surfaced so much, because it's like this like memeable um, statements that can be read from a screen. And actually when you go to showrooms and you experience, like some of this collection might actually be really beautiful and really exciting to experience and feel, but the majority of the, the Westwood consumer actually the consumption occurs visually rather than financially. And I think that's really interesting yeah. to cater for that visual diet in yeah. that way. Exactly. Like as students, right, we're sort of waist deep in referencing and looking at vintage and, and you know, Old Westwood, I'm sure, is on so many mood boards of current designers now, especially with anyone that does any sort of dishevelment or drapery, especially with tailoring. And I just, I, I do feel like that could just be taken to like a whole other level. For a brand with such a big budget, I feel like it could start to... I don't feel excited when I look at new Westwood collections that come out. And it's difficult to look at this so of, you're still in that context. So you're still faithful to what the label is about and you still... Exactly. The, and I wish that about. that was... So it's just about engagement and re-engaging. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I think there's so many designers now, young designers, that have a point of view the w same way that she did from maybe a slightly different place, that could take the brand to being engaging with sort of the, uh, not only the mass markets, but the fashion people that are. I mean, I was just thinking as well with all of this as well, and we were talking about, you know, mm. scrollability and um, images as well. I mean, obviously there is the other thing of advertising as well with this and how do they advertise it? Well, it has Suzanne singing in the back yes. of like a short clip and things like that to make it, to give it more kind of relevance and to give it more power as well. Mm. And obviously they've collaborated with, you know, lots of different um, photographers and artists and people as well. So maybe in the advertising that might help to kind of push that Elevate as well. It, yeah. But then I don't know why they didn't just do a presentation or a lookbook or a film like they have done before. Yeah. It seems like the catwalk wasn't, it, it didn't seem like it was the best choice of how to communicate this collection. It's but an again, amazing I, space where they've chose to... I think as Max was saying, that's the challenge of all designers mm. though, isn't it, as well? Yeah. Even to have like a raised runway that way, that's quite an old school, like, it's, it's like what Gautier... Traditional. You know, it, to me it's like that, um, where they would walk with the, 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 the salon shows with yes. the, the numbered card, to be raised in that way, which actually feels a bit archaic, and maybe that's because they're in the, is it Hotel de Paris? I can't, it says on the press release, but they're in a very grand Parisian space, so Obviously. maybe that's the choice. Yeah because of that, but like, actually that feels a bit tired. Like, imagine how anarchic you could be in this environment for Westwood mm. to, to sort of scream in with, with um, all that active resistance. Mm -hmm. And I know that Andreas for Westwood is usually less political and that they tend to keep the most political um, messaging to the, to the straight Westwood brand. I'm right in that, I think. Yeah. Um, so I suppose we have to take some allowance for that. But even so, like, how fab would it have been to have seen that kind of like 70s, 80s punk anarchy in this grand Parisian, mm -hmm. Rococo, Renaissance space, not sure the period, but that's how it comes across visually. I'd love to have seen that juxtaposition. Yeah, me too. In the clothing also, if yeah. they knew that that's where they were gonna show. You know, I feel she, like she did it before with previous collection, and that's, that's maybe a question that be nice to ask to her, like, why did she choose this? Well, hopefully she done she's this. listening and watching this, <laughs> and they're all scratching their heads and how... Well, it's Andreas it. we should ask, because, like, I think <laughs> Vivian, you know, she's there and she... Let's get that speed watching, dial. But, you know, yeah. she's standing outside protesting for Assange, right? Yes. So she is absolutely has a message and something to say. Mm -hmm. And for me, I would just have loved to see that same energy from the protest and her with yeah. her placard standing and with all the young people like, I love that. I absolutely love that. And I wish that was put on a T-shirt or put on a, you know, protest board, walk down the runway. And I see that disconnect between, whether it's between Andreas uh, and the line of Andreas and the sort of straight Westwood brand, or whether it's just, like, the brand in general. I think that she has such an important message on climate, on sustainability, on political things. You know, she... Um, well, it's about this whole thing with body and the clothing also sort of has some helping political. You as know, well. as young people now with Brexit and with the um, 
uh, with the Labour vote, there's so many young people that you look at the numbers of people that voted for Labour. She she was a big activist for Corbyn, and I wish that that was she was catering to them young people that have that same energy of the punks and the punk era of fashion in the 70s. Yeah. I think they could really tap into that of what they were sort of. Um, you know, their brand identity. I think that's lost now. Yeah. Um, now we've done that, should we have a look at some individual <laughs> yeah, lots? Yeah. Were there indiv any individual lots that you like that you wanted to talk about as well? Um, Hetty will do her best to kind of catch up with us if we say numbers or looks. I think we should well. start with the dagger. Pardon? Have you seen start the dagger? The yeah. the start with the last yeah. look. Well, should we go? last look? It's interesting. <laughs> do you want to go to the last look? Yeah, yeah. let's talk okay. Ella. Okay. <laughs> let's go backwards. I mean, I'm glad they're doing bridal because that's iconically Westwood, but we... Oh, with the dagger, yes. We were speaking before about why Bella Hadid is, is cast in this show, and I think perhaps you could argue, oh, well, Westwood's always been kind of synonymous with the, the supermodel, like mm -hmm. Naomi oh, yes. and Kate, but Naomi and Kate had this street London... Um, they weren't punk at all, but they were more part of that scene. They had a fresh London... Well, they got drunk and rolled in the gutter. Yeah, right? <laughs> but Bella is this slick <laughs> LA does. girl from this Kardashian world of reality TV. She's Don't definitely get me not wrong. Westwood. I actually yeah. think she's great, but it feels like it's the wrong supermodel to be using in this show. There's other girls that have that platform that would resonate yeah, more agree. with the Westwood Conscious. audience than Bella Hadid. Yeah. Maybe because she's at the end of the Westwood, she said herself that uh, somehow she is commercial. I mean... A... Mm. Well, yes, obviously that's going to be an image that's used continuously as well. I mean, the dagger thing is very interesting. Do we think this is like a, yeah, a, a reach out to the cosplay people who <laughs> want to sort of have some sort of fantasy, sort of uh, medieval cosplay? It's like when you go to a wedding, you want a dagger now? Yeah. <laughs> You hate the dagger. I actually think the dagger could be fun, but the way at the end, if we can get to the end of the video, Bella just kind of, she pulls it very slightly, but it's so tame. Like, yeah, it's so tame. If you think about what could be done, there could be like a real scream or something quite performative. Uh, so we're waiting for it to like, bring it out, lick it, <laughs> stab some <laughs> journalists. I want fake right blood, I want full oh, shakes <laughs> because it's so... Um, oh, no, see, I wanted to see that show. You know, because that's fun and that's what Westwood should be about and other people are doing it. It's not that there isn't a... There's not Performative, an Performative, yes. Yeah, there's there's an Bella probably wouldn't be the right person for that, though. Um, well, she wouldn't, and that's why she should not be in the show. Exactly. Although the casting was quite, was quite inclusive, I would say, mm -hmm. as, as usually. Like, uh, it's true, we have Bella, but at the same time, we had, like, uh, different... Uh, we have black models as well. A diversity uh, of models yeah, everywhere as and, well. I mean... Diversity, yeah. We always had that yeah, in the good. Yeah. So shall we start from the beginning yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. and go back through? So shall we just scroll through, Hitty, and wait for somebody to go? I mean, I think we should that. talk about look one. Look one, OK, look one. To put a bomber, look one is, for me, an odd decision for Westwood. I think there's a place to have a Westwood bomber jacket, but it, for an opening look isn't the strongest. Does yeah. anyone else? So, Okay. I agree. Maybe yeah. it's like a relaxed thing. That that's what is the audience? You know, what are the audiences now? Smashable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What do you mean? What are the audiences? And maybe this is something that they can access more easily than somebody in a corset as well. No, I completely agree. I just think put that later in a, in a lineup because look one is often what you know the big sites will put as the cover. Yes. And maybe maybe look two. It's tartan. more stronger somehow. Agree. They should have. And it's blades. like just draped tartan in the kind of. It reminds mm -hmm. the early collection of West with like look one. But more seen it, it's just seen it so it's like it's, it's And it speaks of the whole sportswear trend which we're actually coming out of, I think yeah, yeah, thankfully I at the last socks, the there's trends. a real move away <laughs> in fashion from this Balenciaga Demna world that we've been in for the last few years. And that's great, but it almost feels a bit like Westwood doesn't need to do this. Bomber, they, they, there's a place for it in the stores. Definitely. Maybe they do, though, just remind customers that they do do yeah. things that are kind of more wearable as, yeah. as well. You know? uh, how, how great to have maybe done a bit more of a theatrical piece for look one. Like, this is the statement for the collection. Well, but maybe also, I mean, that. this look could have been styled to death as well. Mm. There could have been a lot more. There could have been gloves, there could have been hats, there could have yeah. been all sorts yeah. of things kind of going on. So they styled it and chose it for a specific reason. Yeah, yeah. Which is commercial. I think the most it's interesting part yeah. is yeah. the socks. But it's commercial yeah. at the end. Exactly. What does it say on the socks? I don't know, but I think no. they look the most interesting. Active resistance. The socks look the most interesting oh, is that <laughs> element to uh, me. You'd buy the socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. 
Okay, so should we have a yeah, look? Let's see what that says. A A A A A. I think it's just I think it's just all A's. Isn't and it? trainers. I mean, A as activists. Well, shall we talk about the number nine then? Because <laughs> on the press release. Should we have a look at? Let's have a look at um, yeah. um, uh, look nine, and then we can talk look about nine, nine as well in the nine. press release okay, as well. Look nine. Just look nine. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, on the press release, we're talking about number nine being a spiritual number. Yeah. And they're sort of hinting on sort of uh, modern magical practices um, and being, in, well, I'm not kind of like looking after yourself, well being, and all those sorts of things. So, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 even though it's quite a plain though. It's yeah. quite, maybe that's it. Maybe being plain is looking after yourself. For me, this whole ninth collection thing seems like. So it's Andreas's ninth collection yes. for, for Westwood alone. And actually, it's a bit like, oh, God, it's our ninth collection. What are we going to name it? <laughs> oh, oh, we'll just do it on the symbolism of nine. Because that kind of ecclesiastical world could have been tapped into. Like, Charles just did it with his last show, yes. Charles Jeffrey. But actually, they're talking about this spiritual law and awakening and service to mankind. But I am seeing very little of that in evidenced in the collection, which... But well, yeah. But I think you were talking about before, Aaron, about, you know, the pieces that have been recycled and saved and, you know, all of that is in there as well in the collection. It's, it's very vintage redone. It, it, you know, you can, if you follow that westward, it's 50 years now, you know, like 50 years of vintage, it feels like they've just pulled that out in the studio and said, how can we do this a slightly different way? You know, it's clever to think, let's look at Look 9 after reading this press release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They haven't even thought of that. Because they would never put that look as look nine. I, I like can't it. believe that's even made the runway show. Like it's it's a jacket with poppers with a tartan lining. Or if they wanted to do with that, trainers. they could have done it like the fish headpiece last season or something crazy and something fun, but instead there's a kind of very simple pixie cut. Well, the whole press release looks a bit confused. I feel like they don't it looks like they don't really know where are, where they are going or where they want to go. Mm. But they are way stronger. I mean, this looks silhouette is interesting. Like, it's... Yeah. Which one? The middle one. Yeah. The middle one, yeah. I guess. The warrior. Like, yeah, it is very warrior. Flying warrior. What's it round her neck? Yeah, it looks like garlic. Yeah, it looks like garlic. Uh, Maybe. garlic, Parisian. <laughs> Stereotyping. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it is garlic. It is. Okay, it actually is. <laughs> I mean, that's actually fun. I think that's pretty. I think brilliant. this is great. Yeah. This is it's an so opening exciting. look. That's an opening look, yeah. Yeah, that's an opening look. Mm. But I don't understand the graffiti reference in terms of everything. Um, was there no sort of uh, explanation anywhere when you guys no, were talking about what no, the graffiti was no. of? There's, okay. But there wasn't an explanation for anything, really. Right. So I guess you just... I, th I thought the gra graffiti was the most exciting print for the whole collection. I think you agreed as well. I really yeah. enjoyed the graffiti print. I think that could have been... It could have pushed the Assange message if that's what they're really focusing on. And it feels, again, that this whole... Like, we, from a press release, can learn so much, and people are so creative now with what they write and how yes, they absolutely. present it. And well, it's part of the journey already. This is not giving you that much information. Yeah, and that's a shame, because this feels cool. I mean, again, to me, it looks like what Charles presented. Mm. Like, this kind of palette is cool. Graffiti is rebellion. But is, it, is it like a nod to being rebellious? But like, I think it's, I think it's just pretty... Well, it makes more sense than anything it, else. It does, it does, but I think it's a very sort of tame way of doing anything rebellious. The garlic is fun. The but garlic, garlic with, with graffiti mm. hat next to each other, it's... Good. It's, That's another it's interesting confused, one. for sure. Yeah. The corset and the head. Yeah, I like Yeah, this. the corset is good. Again, is that... Can we see if that's rosettes or roses? Because that, again, if that's rosettes, it looks like what Charles has just done. But is it also that it's more European as well with all these yeah, it's the as well? Resistance, yeah, it's the isn't it? And actually, in the show, just as this model walks down, uh, Suzanne says, the revolution is... I think that's the Well, first. this is... Well, yes, obviously, this is a... Yeah, the French Revolution or, or revolution in general. It's a reference to that. Yeah, uh, Max is mentioning Charles. I actually think Charles comes from a... 
Well, Charles is a huge fan of Vivian. Yeah, I, but I, th I think Charles Wood is the type of person, not specifically Charles, but he's the type of person that has a point of view. And his point of view comes from a very different place that punks did, but it sort of tackles societal norms. And I think Charles, I think... Um, uh, Matty. Matty Boven, the um, art school the guys. Art school guys. I think these type of guys would really... They could go in somewhere like this and say something with a bigger budget than they are in their studios, sort of, you know, three, four years into their own brands. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame that I don't, I don't really see a massive sort of point of view of what the brand is. She, she says a lot about sustainability and she's saying to consume less and this type of stuff. I wouldn't, if you said to me, name me five sustainable brands, I wouldn't particularly West, say Westwood. Beyond it, yes. Which well, is a shame. Also because you would, like would you say Westwood? Yeah, that's true. Are their fabrics eco-friendly or stuff like that? I feel like... I think... I think she, yeah, yeah. She, I think that they use all this stuff with buttons okay. and um, they source, off the top of my head, they source these buttons that were like melted down and mixed with resin. Um, and I think they, they are sustainably conscious. On the press release, it says that the uh, shoes are made by Gina Shoes and they produce in London, so it's like by local. So and there's I think, Gina and there's Buffalo as well, and yeah, the Buffalo ones yeah. are using recycled materials. And I think it's a good thing well, that it's like to produce in, mm. in London, so produce at home. Yeah, no, I think you have to be clear as uh, anything in fashion now about where your sustainability and um, your uh, wanting to make clothes that are sustainable yeah. and wanting to, you know, help the society and keep us all going with our uh, climate as well rather than um, destroying it all. Well, then, uh, uh, any other... I was going to say, at that scale with sustainability, you can't really... I don't think be fully sustainable or claim full sustainability without greenwashing yourself and that's what they've been accused of. So maybe they're actually pulling back a bit. They're doing the shoe collaboration which is sustainable. They're doing the trinkets and they're saying buy less, choose well. But I think it's, a, it's actually a safe option for them in terms of PR to not fully go for yeah, it. Because yeah, if they started becoming on that list of, oh, name five sustainable brands, yeah. and West, if they were on that list, then they would open up to a whole new wave of criticism. And but don't you think they have the potential to be yeah, the yeah. sustainable the brand? Because yeah. she is yeah. climate change Vivian Westwood, Dame Vivian Westwood. Yeah. That is, you know, pioneer of climate change and like a massive voice of climate change. I wish they were the sustainable brand or one of the. And like you're saying, it's kind of like putting in the press release, there's these little um, sort of messages of consume less, but it's, it's kind of in the middle, it's sort of sat on the fence and confused, you know, in terms of message, apart from everything else. I'm also wondering if she maybe should change her business model, like, I don't know if uh, showing a collection twice a year, it's still yeah. working for a brand like her, you know, like maybe she should be really, I think she has the chance to be more... I think uh, they didn't show for the last one. I think it was a presentation, it was a presentation as opposed yeah. to a full show. But there's the nine. Which was branded as a sustainable... <laughs> oh, there's, that's there's the, the nine earrings. earrings. There we yeah. go. <laughs> I actually really agree. I hadn't thought that way until you said it, but I really agree that they, they're actually probably in one of the best positions Absolutely. to do... They, apart from Stella McCartney, they're actually at that luxury level where they could pioneer sustainability in such an exciting way, and they should get people in, because there are amazing young people on the London scene, on the Parisian scene, doing it. Like, Phoebe English, uh, who tutors at CSM, you know, with her With a practice, tiny budget. With yeah. a tiny budget and a tiny studio, is, I think, actively um, putting changes into place. And she really advocates um, the sharing of ideas, the sharing of contacts, and I wonder if Westwood, as a brand, is participating in those kind of groups and they really should they should get someone like Phoebe on board and even if it's only done in a small way for a brand like Westwood which talks the talk and in in many ways like I don't think we should get it wrong that they they do walk the walk in so many ways politically but in terms of sustainability I think you're right they could go a bit I further. think at the same time why should they have to get Phoebe on board when Vivian is meant to be this activist for sustainability she should be doing it naturally I think why are you putting out so many new ideas and new collections when she should be reworking old collections? I th even down to the invites, their printed invitations, 
Gucci just launched their invitation. They did it through a message on um, WhatsApp, an audio invitation. That's so much more sustainable than sending out a physical invitation. It's little, little details like that I think she could really push. I mean, the other thing is obviously all these studios have a culture. Within them. And I mean, obviously, the Westwood um, studio and the way it's been run has a certain culture that's been going for years Old and years. Fashion, so, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, but it's just been going for a really long time. So they're starting to put change in, which, have, which everybody has to participate in. I'm sure would not be easy. But it, it, <laughs> but it has look, to start. Looking at the clothes, start. it looks like everyone's worked there for 30 years. Yeah. Like, yeah. just by visually looking at the clothes without no music, no theatre. That's the feeling I get. But and I it's really like difficult as a student. Every collection of like, Westwood is similar. But, but, yeah, then, but it's can difficult. you do that, though, as a huge collection or as anybody who's this established? Like, you know, fire everybody, kind of start again, you know, start the revolution without losing the collection and losing it or the whole I doubt they need well. to fire I think she anyone. doesn't want to. I think... Yeah, but I, I mean, but then how do you do it? What I'm sort of saying is how do you do it? No, I think the team want it. I mean, like, energy of new energy. Yeah. And it's not necessarily about it being someone new. Like, we're talking about bringing people on board or... Yeah. Uh, being new creative direction, it, it's not even necessarily about that. It, I'm sure that in house, they have amazing designers and an amazing team. Um, but I wish there was just new energy that uh, sort of nodded to the punk era, but brought something new and exciting. And that, you know, as fashion students, we came and said, "Have you seen the new Westwood?" I, 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 no one would say that. No yeah. one would say that. You know, the relevancy well, of the brand. Apart from last season when she did the mad um, performance, which actually, I know it, it, we're talking about two different labels here, so it's difficult to compare, but maybe we could get up something from last season with the Westwood, not the Andreas for Westwood, which was basically interspersed between the runway elements mm -hmm. were, did everyone see it? Was like them speaking out and she had actors, she had Rose McGowan there, she had um, uh, uh, Sarah Stockbridge. And so it felt like real icons were there and they were delivering amazing political messages, wearing the clothes. And that feels more in line with what we're saying mm -hmm. they should be doing. And I actually did have people say, oh, did you see it? But maybe not for the best reasons because she came out singing in the most quite hilarious way, but it still felt like, oh, let's talk about this. But um, the clothes, that's but what the clothes, I mean. Yeah, the I suppose, clothes. But it, is it just about the clothes anymore? Um, I mean, I wish it was, because I, I loved the old Westwood clothes. Maybe it's two seasons I ago. Think it's, so, it's so similar to these ones. Sorry, maybe it's 19? In fact, we have it in the yeah. pack. With, if we can just tell them which. Is it there? 19. AW or S? It's yeah, AW. This. That one, yeah. So this one had so, so much spectacle and theatre and oration, and it felt at times a bit stilted, but that's probably just because they didn't have enough rehearsal time. But like, it was, it was much more punky. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I know you're looking at the clothes, but the full spectacle, no, the clothes, even if the great, clothes like, were. The clothes. And maybe this is because it's a different brand, a, a different label within the same brand. But look at that, the guy in the it's tux so and the fun. heels, it's so that. great. Yeah. And the makeup look on, on, yeah. the, on the right there. This is more exciting to me Definitely. than yeah. what we've just seen. And we're not even seeing the, the speeches or hearing what yeah. was said. And much more relevant because it's less polished. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's yeah, more yeah. gritty and it's more street and it's more something that you'd casting see our friends wa wearing, yeah. you know, when they go out as well. Yeah, I mean, I've got friends that walked in this show and, like, they would actually wear the piece out after because it's, it's really... Not that it has to be just the youth that wants it because there's a real old-school market that still buy their Westwood and love it and they still have to be catered to, for sure. So that's, that's one of those courses. shows about then, obviously. Yeah. The makeup was quite was more sophisticated for this season compared well, this to, one, yeah, yeah, of course. Compared to yeah. the previous ones. Well, yes, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a completely different market. I prefer the makeup for this one. Uh, I don't know, I feel like I like somehow that the makeup is quite simple and then, you know, like, if, if, we, if we look at the second look, for example, you know, and then you have this kind of excessive outfit. Yeah, that's very yeah. low West, but like the corset wear, worn as a overgarment. But it is a very, very different collection. Yeah, and a completely. Very different presentation as well. 
And was the one in um, the 2019 one, was that in a theatre space or something like that? It looks like it was in a theatre space. I wonder if it was in, uh, I, th it was, I, th I think it was in London, and yeah. it was like, a, it had like organ music and, right. um, yeah, it so was... a very different setting. I mean, much is... different. No, there wasn't a long runway, and there was people sat in the middle, and they sat down on the stage, and they had like really cool posture and great voice and the icons all came out and that's what Westwood should be doing and I, I almost want to see that. I mean the, the Westwood area. shows of the 90s were always sort of spectacles because you didn't expect them to be there as well mm. so they, they always had like the supermodels and all that sort of stuff where the stuff that happened in London was always more grungy as the word mm. was back then <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so yes yeah, so then you know whenever they whenever there was a Paris show, it was all the sort of supermodels. It was a liar, it was Karl Lagerfeld, it was everybody being there saying what a genius she was as well. So, you know, there was all of the sort of stuff happening as well. Yeah. All the editors were there, because obviously in the 90s, London fashion went through dips and rises mm -hmm. where all the fashion editors didn't come here. So you wouldn't get anybody from Vogue or Harper's Bazaar or any of those ones. So Vivian had to go to, uh, to Paris to sort of show as well. So, you know, there was all of that there. So there's all this hype around those shows. And, you know, obviously, Again, it's, you know, there's reasons why this is all happening in Paris as well. Right, yeah. And whether that kind of translates as well into the trajectory of where this label's going as well. So, you know, you, you said this is catering to older market. Like, genuine question, like, who, who is that older market? Because is that the East? Is that Japan, Korea, China? Because I'm actually quite unsure who is this woman or who is this man sort of catering to? Like, who is their man or their woman yeah. on their board mm. throughout? I think she has her loyal customer and <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, agree. Well, I don't know who else could be interested. Yeah. I mean, ending on a wedding dress kind of, I think, says it all. It's a very traditional kind of show at a very kind of bourgeois middle class, mm. middle to upper class sort of like. But with graffiti slapped all over it, like it's... I know, but the thing is, once you have graffiti on a catwalk, then it's consumed. True. It's no longer edgy, it becomes consumed, and it has a value, so it's consumable. True. And that's, well. I think it, this is the same thing that happened to her brand, you know, yeah. somehow. She is established now, so it's like her rebellion was, she was rebel, but now she's established, and, I mean, we can see it from this show. Yeah. But she's still, as a person, just as rebellious and just as active, if not arguably more so, because she's been able to step away from the design schedule and invest in that. What does she love? I and love... I love crap. She's had those. <laughs> Is that what yeah. say? I mean, she's got, like, <laughs> Janelle and Jordan there in the course. It's like, I love... I still love that she does the course to taffeta gowns, but because this... Because Andreas, I think it was the gold label, which was the couture, and now they've called yes. it Andreas for Westwood. Oh, OK. Yeah. So... To me, this doesn't feel that like what Gold Label used to be like couture, if, yes. or at least it felt like that to me. And now that feels much more red label, even though it's ready to wear. To, yeah, right. Ready to wear. And maybe in the terms of the model and how they produce it, it's closer to ready to wear. Yeah. But in terms of its legacy, it, it exists within the within the couture world and within the Parisian Gold Label. So their ready to wear now is just Westwood. Is as right? far as I yeah. understand, it's Westwood and Andreas for Westwood, which is the version of the I mean, that presentation was quite interesting. That was where she'd done this sort of curation in the Serpentine with this mm. free Assange stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can see that. But there was, like, yeah. all these posters, and it was, it was quite interesting in the clothes were and the presentation of itself. So maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a disconnect between the two. There's this Westwood brand as a whole, and then you've got sort of two separate bands doing two separate mm -hmm. things under one umbrella. Yep. And maybe it's just this... Well, three, because there's, there's Westwood as a person, and then there's the two yeah, labels, because exactly. this is becoming its own practice. And mm -hmm. I think as, as the way in which fashion practice evolves or continues to evolve, I think even this in itself becomes, becomes a brand. It becomes yeah, another yeah. label within the Westwood thing of like, Rather than buying a Westwood T-shirt, you might go to a ticketed talk, which is part of building her yeah, audience. Yeah. And you're not consuming in clothing anymore, you're consuming in an activity, which is actually quite a sustainable way of, of being a designer, maybe. Like, you have a few clothes that some people buy, but you, you actually sustain yourself and support yourself financially by doing ticketed events and talks. Yeah, and yeah. Things, I right? think she really needs to change her business model since she's like, uh, so political involved and yeah. saying, talking about sustainability, I'm, I'm not sure that showing a collection mm. twice a year, it's, 
in line with what she's saying. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's what you've just said, isn't it? There needs to be a much more clear definition between what all of these are about and who they're marketed to as well. Yeah. Because it's going to keep on changing, no doubt. And as you said, as she becomes a brand and a whole label by herself as well, and that's something else. Well, really, she's becoming an, almost like a performance artist yeah. in her own right as well with what she talks about and how she talks about um, the connection between fashion and the climate and what she feels about it as well. So, you know, that's a very different thing as well. So maybe just to relax, mm. time out. Yeah. Take really kind of read that uh, sort of press release, really get the spiritual, yeah. have that moment. Yeah, because I don't see <laughs> this positive example in, in the, the show at all. We saw a nine as in, maybe we don't know enough it would take going backstage and chatting with Andreas, but like, it has to read, doesn't it? Mm. And, it and it's not reading. I think that another thing to consider is the fact that she owns the label. So it's like she's free to, to do whatever she wants and she doesn't have so much pressure by a big corporation but maybe if she was with a big corporation the, the collection would be well it would be like the t-shirts with yeah. the orb logo and the necklaces that everyone wears because that's a whole other side of westwood that we we in, in the fashion world don't even think about but if we went home to our non-fashion friends and family the westwood that many of them know will be either lasting from like the Wogan show and the interview way back in the, was it, I don't know how long ago it was, like the 80s. Or it would be the t-shirts that your lads wear out on a night out oh, with yeah, the yeah. Westwood logo. And none of this, thankfully, resembles that. But maybe we could talk about that more, like whether you can still try and be sustainable when you're flogging garments in TK Maxx. Because you can go into a TK Maxx and see, see Westwood t-shirts, which probably neither Andreas nor West would have even seen, but it's still their name and their world that's going out there and being consumed mm. in a way that's definitely not green. <laughs> um, so I'm just thinking, should we all sort of say one more thing about the shirt? Claudia, do you want to kind of start us off? Um, one more thing. Um, <laughs> I think I said it before, but I'll say it again. I wish she reworked an old collection, I really do. Or I wish it was a, not 100% as sustainable, but I wish them, we knew more about the materials. I wish the materials were obviously not brand new. Even like when you go on her website, I was looking at it the other day, like there's a whole big section of new arrivals, um, brand new t-shirts. It just seems very contradicting to the message behind Vivian. And I wish we could see more of her activism. As we were saying, maybe that's a separate thing, the, the Vivian yeah. as a protester and the Vivian as a label, yeah. two very different things. But I wish we could see more of that in her yeah. collaborative show. I, I, I sort of tend to agree that I wish there was more synergy between Vivian as a protester and Vivian as a runway show with her name on the door, along with Andreas. And yeah, I'd love, as a young person, I'd love her to be doing on the runway what she says in the press, vote Labour, free Assange. I, want, I would love to just see that, given the platform that she has, is spread to the whole world, rather than it being an article in the Daily Mail. You so know? you're sort of feeling that she's underusing what yeah, she has, sure. the resources she has as a personal icon, basically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All of these things. Max? I completely agree. Um, Maximilian. Maximilian. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I mean, I feel like I've said a lot, but yeah, I think it's. I think the theatre and joy and fun and punk and anarchy, all of that should come back in because that is what made us all love Westwood as children. And and yeah, I just want to see a bit more of that and exactly what what Aaron said. Right. Michelle. I like that uh, we can see some key elements of our Westwood collection, like the corsetry, the drapery, the tailoring. And I always like when a designer is faithful to their identity, but at the same time, she really needs to uh, make sure that her words are on the same line with her actions. And uh, I keep on repeating that, but uh, she should change the business model. I think she she said the um, the performer said in well, the. She should acknowledge how yeah. the business has changed and needs to change for it to stay current. The performer was saying in the keep on repeating it's 2020. So yeah, it's 2020, and let's see what she can do. Yeah. 
Well, um, personally, I'm very excited to go back and see it with sound because I love Suzanne. I've known Suzanne for many years. Um, and it will be great to see that overlay of that with this collection as well. Um, I kind of agree with you guys. It's a bit of a mismatch here where you've got this kind of strong protest sort of thing going on in the background as well with Michelle, uh, sorry, with um, uh, Suzanne. And then sort of like coming forward to this kind of Kachuri luxe sort of looks as well. Um, so it'd be kind of nice to see it. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing all of that and having a look at it online. Um, and hopefully it makes a bit more sense and sort of sits well with everyone. Um, so I'm just going to do the outro now. Um, uh, thank you all the panellists for coming along today. And um, thank you everybody for watching. Um, and uh, for extensive Fashion Week uh, coverage, be sure to visit showstudios.com. And if you're watching via Show Studios YouTube, uh, be sure to comment, subscribe, and like, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>